Well, the word for today, I am calling the power of the resurrection in light of COVID-19. The power of the resurrection in light of COVID-19. Most of us are in our homes right now, self-quarantined, and this will definitely be a Easter to remember. But may it be a good remembrance of celebrating the greatest day in his story in history. So if you have your Bible, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The Apostle Paul says to the church in verse 1, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you. So the Apostle Paul is saying he wants to remind the church of the gospel. Gospel means good news. Now why would Paul need to remind us of the gospel? Well, the simple reason is that we often forget in a world with great anxiety and fear and changes taking place rapidly, we need to remind ourselves of what the gospel is. And that's what we're doing today. What is the gospel? A few weeks ago, I misplaced my keys, my car keys, and I was looking everywhere for them. I had to be somewhere, and I had many things in my hands. And I remember that my daughter, Nema, often hides the keys. And of course, I got upset and assumed that she was the one that has the keys, and I asked her, uh, where are my keys? She looked at me, and she said, Daddy, the keys are in your hand. Now, maybe you've done that before. You feel really stupid and humbled by that. But it shows that we are quick to forget what we really need. In fact, what is in our hands, we often forget what is before us. And the gospel is one of those things. And Easter is a time to remember what we should always remember. And that is the greatest news for us, the gospel. Verse 3 and verse 4 is Paul's focus. He says, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance to the Scriptures. Now there's three things here. If you want to understand the Gospel, you always have to remember. Sin the crucifixion, and the resurrection. So sin, the crucifixion, and the resurrection. If you don't understand all three, if you just understand one, you'll get confused and frustrated. On Good Friday, there was a Muslim that was saying how he felt so bad for the Christians that they believed in such a lie that their Savior, supposed Savior, died and suffered on the cross. Well, he doesn't understand the whole story. Why did Jesus die? And did he stay dead? No. The story of the cross is a story of triumph and victory, not of crushing defeat. You need to understand all three. Sin, the crucifixion, and the resurrection of Jesus. The first one, Paul says that Christ died for our sins. So who has sinned? Us our sin. Well, who is us or our? Well, it's all of mankind. In fact, sin started in the Garden of Eden with the first human, Adam. You remember he sinned, and I can only imagine the following day he woke up with a back pain or a blurred vision or bad hearing. But at least he had enough hearing because the next day, Jesus or God, rather, came to the garden and said, Adam, where are you? And there we see the corruption of the greatest thing, which is the separation between us and God. Sin corrupted our relationship with God, but it also corrupted this whole earth and this universe. And the consequences of sin are evident in creation, but also in our own bodies. We get sick. We die. We suffer. Even creation, there's earthquakes and tsunamis which kill thousands upon thousands of people. 
this is terrible. There's pandemics like COVID-19. That's the reality. A friend a few days ago said, I can't wait for COVID-19 to be done with and so that we can get back to our life, our good life. You know, the reality is, I don't mean to sound mean, but everybody that has COVID-19 will die. That's the truth. That's the reality. Now, it's not a new prophetic word here. Everybody that has COVID-19 will die. It's also true that everybody that doesn't have COVID-19 will die. Now, some will recover from COVID-19, but then they will die. I was reading a story of uh, one man that recovered, but a week later he got into a car accident and he died. This is the reality, the sad reality that we live in, in this earth, on this earth, in a way that we weren't supposed to live. This was not God's design, but because of our sin, things have been corrupted and we've been separated from God and people die because of sin. But the text says the crucifixion or Jesus' death on the cross was for our sin. Jesus died for our sin. Now, how can this be? The same God that came to Adam in the garden was the same God that sent Jesus, that loved us so much that he sent Jesus to save us. It says he died for our sins according to the scriptures. Isaiah 53 says that the Messiah would bear our iniquities, that is our sin. The chastisement of us all, again our sin, would go upon him. This is grace. When Jesus came, he was without sin. He was perfect. But he bore our sin. Now you might say, well, that doesn't make sense. How can someone bear someone else's sin? Well, even in the court of law, this takes place. If you work for somebody and you commit a crime while you're working for that person, the employer can be fined and be found guilty. And it's also true that the employer can pay the fine for the employee. This is happening in the legal courts. But this is what happened and serves as an analogy what Jesus did. He was perfect. He is Lord. But he took the punishment that we deserve on him. It is only grace and his immense love. As some have said, it wasn't the nails that kept Jesus on the cross. It was his love for us. So he died for our sins, for your sins, according to the scriptures. But not only this, not only died, but it says he resurrected according to the scriptures. So the Muslim that sees Jesus is just dying on the cross and how foolish and how insignificant it is he doesn't see the victory for he took our sin and he was victorious over sin and the consequences of sin which is death in 1 Corinthians 15 Paul says that if Christ hasn't resurrected from the grave our faith why we're listening to this message why we read the Bible he says it's it's pointless it's futile he says all of history comes to one historical event which is the resurrection the resurrection make no mistake about it the early church believed and based their faith on a historical fact Jesus rose from the dead remember the story as I said when the disciple or when Mary and the women came to the disciples they were locked in their house they were fearful the text says and then when they saw the resurrected they touched him and they as Thomas did touch the wounds of Christ they were witnesses and their lives were radically changed all but one of the twelve disciples died a martyr's death now you might say, well, other faiths, there's also martyrs. People die for their own causes. But Christianity is very different here. The first church, and as it says, Paul says there were 5,000 people that Christ appeared to. 
these people put their faith on a historical fact. And that's why Luke, when he writes, he says he writes as an eyewitness account. Or as John in 1 John, he says they testify to the things they saw and touched. It was based on an event that took place, not wishful thinking, not something that just someone wrote down and now they're going to believe with their own heart. No, our faith is based on historical fact. They saw the resurrected Lord. They could see that someone has power over sin and death. He said he went to the cross to die for our sins and he rose from the dead. He had defeated sin and defeated death. This is the power of the resurrection. And as we think of COVID-19 and we think of death and the implications of sin, we know that Christ has the antidote. We can come up with immunizations, and I hope we do, but we're still going to die. There's only one cure. Let's not be mistaken. There's only one cure to disease. And that's not medicine. It's the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You want a solution for the pandemic? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It says in Romans chapter 10 verse 9, for those who confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in their heart that he was raised from the dead shall have eternal life. So if you have not believed or confessed that Jesus is Lord and risen from the dead, believe now. We have the solution. You don't have to wait 18 months for medical trials. No, it's a done deal. Christ lives, therefore you live. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Try not to work out your salvation. That's not how you're saved. No, you're saved on the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. Proof that death has been defeated. And as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, O oh death, where is your sting? Church, don't be afraid. Do not fear. Put your faith in the risen Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. God bless you.